Welcome to the last day of January, everyone. Can you believe how quickly this month has passed, getting ready to turn into February? Really glad you've joined me today for our devotion. We are in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 today. That is part of our Bible reading plan here at First Baptist that our members are reading and our D groups are using as well. So hopefully you've already read this chapter. I want to talk about Two things. Um, One is to help you understand something as you're reading the chapter. The other is just what really stood out to me. God spoke to my heart that I want to share with you. The first is is about the importance of uh, religious holidays. Um, Because in this chapter, you have uh, not only the weekly Jewish Sabbath discussed, but in verses 5 and 6, the uh, the pass the annual Passover, also the feast of unleavened bread, which lasted seven days. Then later in the chapter, at verses twenty six and following, you have the Day of Atonement. You drop down to verse thirty four, the feast or festival of booths. Um, and so there's there's a lot in this chapter about religious holidays within Judaism, which I think reminds us that that uh, having and I, I said this a few weeks ago in one of the devotions that having you know religious holidays uh, that we celebrate every year can be a really good thing that we don't need to be legalistic or fair like Pharisees about it uh, whether you do or do not observe these or howl and so on, but as followers of Christ. You know, celebrating Christmas can be a very good thing. Celebrating Thanksgiving can be a very good thing. Celebrating Easter can be a very, very good thing. Um, Times when we don't work, and in our culture, we tend to focus on family, which is okay, which is actually good. But I think if we're going to take lessons from Scripture about holidays, we need to also focus on God. And actually, that's where we need to start. And if there's one thing as American Christians... We have probably probably lost when it comes to celebrating Christian holidays is is we make it about family more than we do Jesus or more than we do God, <clears throat> and uh, I know, I, I'm not wanting to diminish family or be negative about that, but I think in some ways we have really lost the idea that these re- our religious holidays Easter. Uh, Christmas are are first and foremost about Jesus Christ. We may talk about Jesus is the reason for the season, but let's just be honest. Most of our energy goes into family stuff, not faith stuff. So that's just one one reminder. Also, when you're reading these chapters in Leviticus and other places in the Bible, just to help you understand as you read it, um, the Jewish calendars calendar does not start in January. So, for instance, in here in chapter twenty three. Um, In verse 5 in Leviticus, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month, that twilight is the Lord's Passover. Uh, The first day of the month in the Jewish calendar is Nisan, N-I-S-S-A-N, which usually occurs in March or April. They they have a way of following the lunar calendar. And uh, so um, uh, in the spring, so the first month, for them, it's not January like it is for us. It's later in the spring, March or April. You, f- you find the same thing over in verses 26 and 27 on exactly the 10th day of this seventh month. Well, the seventh month is when the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Booths, which is their version of Thanksgiving, you might say, took place. That's actually in the fall, um, in, in uh, September or October. So that just helps you as you're reading this. Also, one more thing. Our technically our next day begins at midnight, right? So I'm I'm this this is a devotion for for Monday, January uh, 31. Today technically ends at midnight, and Tuesday begins at midnight. And so we think of tomorrow. Well, in the Jewish calendar, a day ended and the next day began at twilight, at sunset. So when the sun would go down at the end of a day, that's when that day ended and the next day started. And so sometimes when you're reading in the Old and the New Testament, it can get a little bit confusing because we read those things and we think we think the way we do it here in America in 2022. So I just want you to be, be aware of those things. Now, um, the thing that spoke to my heart, though, was verse 22. And so before I get too winded and and talk too long, let's look at verse 22 real quickly. Uh, 
in chapter 23, verse 22, he says, when you reap the harvest, so when you're gathering your crops, your grain, and so on out of your fields, when you reap your harvest, uh, moreover, you shall not reap to the very corners of your field, nor gather the gleanings of your harvest. So when you're, uh, I grew up on a farm, we raised corn, we raised hay, um, uh, and so he's saying when you're gathering your crops, whether it's the corn that we use to feed our cattle and horses or the hay and so on, he says you don't harvest the corners of those fields. You leave them. And the gleaning, so what falls to the ground, because sometimes when you're doing that, there's just stuff that falls down on the ground. He says you leave it. You don't. You, you just leave it. You don't collect it. Why? Well, in verse 22, you are to leave them, the corners and what, the gleanings that fall on the ground, leave them for the needy and the alien, the stranger. And the needy, they had a welfare system. Um, when they would gather their crops, food was provided for the poor and and um, the alien, for uh, refugees, for uh, people passing through. Um, the corner of that field was left, and they would go out and they they would harvest it themselves, or what fell on the ground, they would pick it up, and that was their way of caring for the poor, for the needy. One of the things I like about that is it protected the dignity of the needy because they still had to go out and do some work to get it. It wasn't we're just giving everybody a check. Uh, from our American history, you go back nearly a century ago, the Great Depression and President Ro Roosevelt and his WPA works projects where bridges and school buildings and, and uh, other public buildings and parks were built um, they were government projects, and people got paid, but they worked. So it was it was a way of putting people to work and paying them to work while also benefiting the public, which in many ways to me is far superior to just giving out checks, which it, over time takes away people's sense of dignity and self-worth and self-respect and the uh, the sense that I need to have a work ethic. And I think we – we could learn something from what God told the Jewish people to do in the Old Testament as a way of caring for the needy. Um, so take that for what it's worth. Uh, see, work is not just about making money. Work is about dignity. Work is also about self-worth. Work is about making a difference. And um, sometimes I think we forget that in America and need to be reminded. So that's the word for today. Look forward to being with you tomorrow.